Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So, um, yeah, there's a backstory to this wine. So yeah, it's Mayomi. You, see, you got it right here. I think it's the first time I've ever reviewed Mayomi. It's not the first time I've ever had it. Um, it's been a long, long time since I've had it. Um, so let's just get right into it. So this is the 2016 Mayomi Pinot Noir. I bought this at HEB, so it's local grocery store here in San Antonio, for $15.97, plus tax and all that fun stuff. So what's the backstory on this? All right, so um, the Corvin cap thing going on. <clears throat> so during my recovery uh, from heart surgery, um, I, I'm a member, I'm a member of a couple, you know, Facebook groups and this one particular group, uh, they were, some people were talking about getting together here in San Antonio for a wine dinner. And, um, you know, a lot of the people that are really, really active in the group are like industry people, not, um, you don't have to be an industry person to be in the group, but. A lot of them are. I'm really starting to like kind of get pissed off at this Corvin. I don't know if I need a new model. I'm gonna have to contact them because it seems like I get this a lot. It's, you can't really hear it. I don't know if you heard that, but it's like there's a little hissing going on and it's coming from in here. Okay, nope, here it goes. It's about to pop. It really pisses me off. I'm not getting 15 pumps out of this. I guarantee I'm not. You're supposed to get 15 glasses of wine. I'm not even getting close to that. So I don't know if I have a faulty unit or something, but it's really starting to irk me. Anyway. Radio edit. Sorry. It's just going to keep doing that, so. Sorry, I don't normally use profanity on my show. <clears throat> I'll probably bleep it out. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm really upset. I've tout this, I tout this thing to everybody, but I've been noticing this year that this is frequently happening and I don't know why. And um, anyway, I don't have to contact him. So anyway, backstory on the Mayomi. So uh, wine dinner. So we decided where we're going to have our little dinner and um, everyone was supposed to bring like a wine. And uh, so I decided I was going to try to bring something nerdy, but I also wasn't drinking yet. So um, I went to High Street Wine Company. So that's where I bought the, the six pack for the holiday wines. And I went and I said, look, I'm looking for something kind of nerdy, but like this is my price point. So we got this uh, Dovaset uh, Petite Chablis. And I, I bought two bottles. So I was like, okay, I'll buy one bottle for the group. They all can have it. And I'm buying one bottle for me because the person who sold it to me really spoke highly of it. But then in the back of my mind, I was like, for lack of a better thing going on, Naomi is, Pinot Noir is kind of the butt of a lot of jokes in this group. Now, I'm definitely somebody that my palate has totally improved over the years. And, and in general, Pinot Noirs like this, I've never liked. Even before I became a, a wine guy. Um, there are some better than others, but I've never really particularly cared for it. But I bought it as, quote, a joke wine that I was, I was bringing as this is my nerd wine and all that. 
Nobody drank it, which was fine because I don't didn't care whether anyone drank it or not. Uh, we didn't even, you know, obviously didn't crack it open. But so that's that's the background on it. Uh, why I'm doing this wine, and you know what? There's a huge market for this thing. We got 700,000 cases of this wine being sold. So there's people who like it. So who who am I to be a wine snob? Um, which I don't really think I'm a wine snob, but I also feel like over time my palate has um, changed in a certain way that I like certain styles or certain quality levels or certain price levels of wine. But I mean, I've reviewed six dollar, five dollar, ten dollar bottles of wine all the time. That was but frequently enough on the show. And many of them I've enjoyed and many of them I haven't. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna do a real review on this wine because I haven't had it in a long time. And they sell so much of it, there's obviously a market for it, right? At anywhere I work, you know, I'll be more than happy to sell you a Mayomi or sell you Behringer White Zin or Sutter Home White Zin if that's what you want or some Moscato. These are not wines that I normally gravitate towards that I'm going to be like going, oh, I want to drink them. But somebody wants them, right? So there's a market for it. So where did Miami come from? Uh, so Joe Wagner, who's the son of Chuck Wagner of Camus Vineyards, uh, came up with this uh, little gem in uh, 2006 from 90,000 cases. I'm sorry. Well, it went from nothing in 2006 to a highly respectable 90,000 cases by 2010. And then, but since then, the sales exploded, and they were expected to sell 700,000 cases in 2015, which is the year that they sold, um, to Constellation for, get this, 315 million, M-I-L-L-O-N, uh, I'm sorry, I-O-N, million uh, dollars. Not cents, not dimes, not quarters, but dollars. So obviously there's, there's a big market for this thing. Um, they say that they, I mean, I'm reading from the Wine Spectator, that Mayomi is roughly 97% Pinot Noir with small amounts of, and get this, this is kind of interesting, uh, of other grapes, including Riesling, Gewürztraminer, Chardonnay, and Grenache. So of those four grapes, only one of them is a red grape. Um, and I can tell you, in our industry, the, the Somme industry, um, the story, the joke is wines like this um, are not 100% Pinot Noir. Well, that says right there, but we like to say it's 75% Pinot Noir and 25% Syrah because these, these wines tend to be really deep. Now, the Bell Gloss line, which is kind of a derivative, this is a derivative of the Bell Gloss, um, they're really like opaque. They're not, they're not, I mean, they're Pinot, but they're not Pinot like we think of Pinot. Um, and I personally like the Clark and Telephone and the Dairyman. Not really the Las Alturas. It's too cab-like. The others are cab-like, but that was really cab-like. So that's, that's kind of what's going on with, with Mayomi. Um, big guys came in and bought it up. The Wagner, you know, Joe Wagner was kind of like, hey, man, I got a gold. Boom, let's sell it. And I don't blame him, you know. If he wants to do that, that's that's it's totally up to him. It's his wine, or it was his wine, but at the time it was his wine. Do his wine, does do, do what he wants. Um, now, it, also the Mayomi, um, go away. Pinot Noir is a combination of three appellations. Um, it's, and I don't know if this is for the 2016 necessarily. Or I'm on the website, but it, was, it actually says it on the bottle. Um, it's three appellations. Oh, they don't put their percentages here. 56% um, Monterey, 26% Santa Barbara, and 18% Sonoma. These are all counties. Every, every county in the United States is automatically an Appalachian. So it's a tri-county, it's a tri-county Appalachian, which, you know, up until like, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I didn't realize it was actually a tri-county. I thought it was like California. Anyway, so let's check it out, man. I might actually like it. Maybe I won't. But doesn't hurt for me to try it. Now, first of all, let's, let's just let's kind of just get the color out of the way. So this actually is fairly Pinot Noir-like on color. It's not like really deep ruby or garnet colored. I mean, I can see my hand through it for the most part, which is what Pinot Noir should be like. So there's a plus already for that.
Okay, so right off the bat on the nose, not a fan of it. It, it's, it's, it smells like every other California Pinot Noir. Um, but it's, 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 it's like a bramble, which in general, I don't mind bramble, but since I know it's Pinot, I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting like, you know, cherries for days, but I'm really not getting any fruit on this. It's more of a wood characteristic, um, but not, but not anything else. Touch of cinnamon. There's some spices coming through on it. So to me, I'd be almost like, well, this is, is this a Burgonia? This is Burgundy? Maybe. But with Burgundy, I would, I would be a little more excited about the nose. I just taste it. I'm pretty sure the most vocal people in the wine group that this came up, this, this wine comes up in a lot, pretty sure the most vocal of that group never watches my show. So I'm pretty sure I'm safe to say this. It's not like terrible. I mean, I've had some way worse Cali Pinot Noirs. But with that said, I mean, it's, boatload of cherries more maraschino looks like like a like a luxardo maraschino cherry not like not those bright red cherries but like you know those deep like almost purplish cherries that have that that just drip in that juice it's more like that i just got a whiff of like some milk chocolate on the nose too i love milk chocolate i don't mind it on my wine but i'm not expecting it on pinot noir But this is totally easy drinking. And that was one of the things we were talking about, like the success of Mayomi. It was great timing. Sideways had come out in 2004, and people were looking for easy drinking Pinot Noirs. And this fit the bill. And it just skyrocketed after that. And it's, is this something that I would buy for myself in general? No. But I'm going to drink the whole bottle at some point. Like, I'm going to just relax and drink the bottle and enjoy it for what it is, a $16 Pinot Noir. That doesn't really taste entirely like a Pinot Noir, but I mean, it's close. I mean, the Wagners, are probably, well, the Wagners probably don't care anymore, but if they are watching or the Constellation people are watching, they're probably, like, throwing stuff at the screen, telling them, saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's got the cherries like Pinot Noir is supposed to have. Um, it doesn't have the chemical like taste I tend to get from Cali wines, especially Pinot Noir. Um, I don't. I, I get a touch of mint on it. I really don't get any potting soil or just or earth into earth earth at all, which also might help uh, the uh, broad appeal of this wine. You know, they want they want something lighter than a cab, but that tastes is tasty like a cat, whereas a lot of times Pinot is a little bit thinner, even on the on the palate. Here's the bottom line. This is someone's house Pinot Noir. If this if you if you go to some type of event and this is the the Pinot Noir they're gonna they're gonna they're going to uh, uh, pour. Um, if you're at a restaurant that has a really, really basic wine list and you want a Pinot Noir, go ahead and get it. It's not terrible. I remember it being worse, but it's not a wine that I would like rush out and buy some more of, which honestly, that's not a lot of wines. It's smooth, it's light, 
easy drinking. It's got a touch of cherries in it, so it's got the varietally correct flavor profile on that part, at least that, that part of it. Um, it's not high in alcohol. I think it's like 13.5 or something like that, or 13.8. 13.7. So alcohol is well contained. It's, it's, it's not out of balance. I can see the, I can see the broad appeal to this wine. Um, it's a red wine that's really easy to drink. And you could tell me it had columbard in it, but I'd be like, okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, if this is your style, you'll love it. If you haven't had it, you know, if you've never had Mayomi and, and what I described, you know, what limited description I have of it. Sounds like something you'd like. Go ahead. No. Go ahead and splurge, and, and, or maybe not splurge, but just go ahead and spend the, the, the 16 bucks on it, 17 bucks. So yeah, I'm actually impressed with it a little bit, I have to say. All right, so that's going to do it for uh, this episode. As always, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links, I'm uh, sorry, below to find out more about Mayomi. And you can click the link over there for donations. Uh, they'd be much appreciative. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.